family and friends. And I had to uh, call them to set my practice appointments. I was literally sitting in the corner of my room, and I, li I rented a Out. And I'm sitting there looking at myself, I'm like crawling in a corner, and I'm nervous as hell, and I'm sweating, and I'm like, am I really going to do this? And how many of you have had the what if questions happen to you? Like, what if I call all these people and, and they say no, or they scream at me, or they hang up on me? What if all my friends hate me because I called all their parents? What if the people that I go to, that my parents go to church with, what if, what if they're like, are you crazy? Manager, I'm just gonna do it. And I called and I set up nine appointments that night. I talked to 10 people, I set up nine appointments, and I was like, oh, it works. It works. I mean, you guys have noticed it works if you follow the program. So uh, fast forward years and years, I went from the shy guy who couldn't make friends in groups of people who was totally uncomfortable talking to people I'd never known before, asking for people's phone numbers, to the guy who now, you know, my wife and I have built multiple companies with multiple brands. Uh, we do millions of dollars in sales, and as a result, we have a ton of people who really love us. What most people don't tell you is that out of the $500,000 that I've sold the last few years in a row, um, every year, over $300,000 of that is to repeat customers. And that's just our cutco business. So we make over $150,000 in profit every year just from repeat customer business. And people always ask, how do you do it? And what I've always told people is this. The secret is setting it up in a way from the very get-go that your customers love you. That they love you, they're loyal to you, they're willing to introduce you to their friends and their family, they're willing to work you through their entire network, and they just, they just, there's something about you where they're like, man, like I know I did a really great job with someone new, when they say, man, I wish my kid was like you. I'm like, yes! Did you have a daughter? I'm just kidding. That's what I said in high school and uh, college. Not now. I've been married for 12 years happily, and my wife is amazing. So, um, so here we go, right? So I want to talk to you guys today about what you can do to actually make that happen. Right? How many of you have heard about rapport? Like you did training, you talked about rapport. Raise your hand. Everybody should raise your hand. Okay, how many of you know how to ask for leads because you learned that? In training, like you're asking for referrals, you're getting referrals. Raise your hands, everybody. By the way, if you've never seen me talk before, it's like a workout. I'm going to have you raise your hands, and here's what I'm going to do. I want to teach you today exactly how I got 10,000 views in one appointment. How many of you want to know how to do that? Trick question. Do you want to know or do you not want to know? Yeah. Do you guys want to know? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to teach you that. Right? By the time we're done today, you should know how to build rapport in a way where it's not just this thing you do at the very beginning and then go right into your sales pitch, but it's actually something that you do in a way where people trust you and they love you and they can't help but want to help you out. How many of you think that would be awesome if you could learn those types of skills today? Okay, great. I'm going to teach you some of the things that the best of the best in the business do, things I've done for years, things that I was taught when I was in your chair years and years ago. Here's what I need you guys to do. Number one, a couple things you gotta do in order to make this happen, right? Number one, getting it out. So if you wanna get this stuff, work right away. And then they quit. Anybody guilty of that in the room today? I am. I've done it a hundred times. Here's what I have to remind myself. If I try something that someone taught me, if I try something that a master, someone who's already getting the results that I want, tried and it doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean that that system or that thing is broken. It just means I haven't gotten good enough at it yet. So, you know, Michael Jordan, he got cut from the basketball team. How many of you heard the story? In high school, got cut from the basketball team. His coach said, "Pro 
throws every day until he made 100 free throws his entire career. That was his habit. That's how he became a master at basketball. He was not naturally talented, he became talented. And he's arguably one of the best basketball players in the world. Yes or yes? Yes, yes absolutely, right? So how do you do that too? You've got to implement stuff and practice it over and over and over again, no matter what. Can I count you guys for that? Yes or yes? Yes. All right, awesome. So we're going to talk about two things today. I'm going to teach you about how, how do you build relationships with your clients in a way where they love you for the rest of their lives, where they stay committed to you for the rest of their life, where they, when they think Cutco, they don't just think, oh, cool, nice. Cutco Baldo. How does that happen? Right? Let's talk about it. Whether you are someone who is very, very comfortable building rapport, like that's your thing, if that's you, you're going to learn some higher level skills today, some things, little nuances and tweaks that you can do to take it to the next level. Or if you're totally outside your comfort zone talking to strangers and people you don't know, well, we're going to fix that too. And whether you're getting one referral on every appointment right now on average, or you're already getting 10 or 20 referrals on average on every appointment, I'm going to teach you the skills on how you take that up. Get to the next level. So, rapport, right? Let's talk about rapport. We're going to start there. The goal of rapport is to make a long term connection. Okay? The old way of rapport is it's like if you study sales training and stuff like that, one of the things that's always taught is you've got to build rapport from the beginning. Like you have to build rapport in the very beginning because if you can't connect or make a relationship, then you're not going to be able to sell anything. Right? And the reason that people have taught that is because it's absolutely true. But in today's world, where people are more connected and more distracted than ever before, it's weird that our world is more connected than it ever is before. We're also less connected. Anybody notice this? Raise your hand. Right? How many of you have thousands of friends or hundreds of friends on Facebook right now? How many of those people do you talk to on a regular basis? Right, this guy's like two, two, bro. I've got like 500 friends, I got two that I talk to on a regular basis. Right, so we're more connected than we ever have been before, a little bit more distracted too. We're not actually building a great relationships. So how do you fix that? Right? See, rapport in today's world is about not just doing this thing at the beginning and then going into a sales pitch. It's about learning how to weave rapport throughout your entire presentation, throughout your entire interaction with the customer. So how do you do that? Right? How do you do that? It's very simple. Number one, the questions that you ask. Number two, getting information that will help you in the end, or in the, like later on. And number three, not having fallbacks. I'm going to explain this. So number one, the questions that you ask. Any question that you ask is rapport. Plain and simple, write that down. Any question that you ask is building But any question that you ask is building rapport. And the reason that's true is because here's what happens, right? If you just like ask four or five questions at the beginning, and then you're like, okay, let's go ahead and get started, and you go right into your demonstration, and then all you do in your demonstration is this is for this, and this is for this, and let me tell you about the company, and let me tell you about the product, and let me tell you the features and the benefits, and let me tell you about the warranty, and then here's, here's the knife set, and here's all the knives that come in that set, here's what all those knives are for. And then here's, you know, the competitors. Here's the prices of those competitors. Here's the prices of Cutco. And the next question that you ask is, do you want to go ahead and buy it? You just had that big gap in between where you ask some questions, you built some rapport, you made a connection, but then you lost that connection throughout the demonstration because you became pitching instead of keeping it personal. You guys follow me? So how do you keep it personal? You keep it personal by just asking questions throughout the appointment. So one of the things my manager taught me when I was brand new in this business that, that just changed everything for me was she said, hey, don't say that the trimmer is for this. Say, do you ever eat tomatoes? Oh, you do? Well, this is what you use. That's what you use the trimmer for. Here's why the trimmer would be great on tomatoes. Do you ever cut up? Yeah. 
thing and then teaching them how that's the thing that they can do. Here's the thing. You can ask any question. You can turn virtually any part of the appointment into questions all the way throughout. So when you watch me sell on a demo or at booth or anything like that, one of the things that people always know is that I'm very good at asking questions. So what are the three types of questions that I ask? Number one, prospecting questions. Those are questions that give me information that I need to help the customer later on. To find out if they're even interested or what they might be interested or anything like that. Number two, qualifying questions. Qualifying questions just help me know, like, what do I got to show them? What are the different types of things I need to show them? So there may be things like, uh, you know, hey, do you ever do this? Do you ever have this happen? Do you ever do this? Do you ever do that? Have you ever felt this way? Prospecting questions may be like, you know, uh, are you sick of dealing with dull, crappy knives? Do you love your knives? If you were to, uh, if you were to have a perfect knife set, what would it look like? What kind of features would it have? What would you want it to do? Those types of questions, right? And then there's closing questions, which closing questions are more direct. Like, hey, if you were to get something today, would you do it with the table knives, or would you do it without? Would you do the? What would you pick as your free stuff? Would you do it on payments? Would you do it all at once? What would you prefer? But every question that you ask, what it does, it gives you the opportunity to make a personal connection with the question. And there's also just plain old get to know you questions, right? Those are like the bonus questions. Just get to know you questions. So asking questions, not just in the beginning, but all throughout the appointment, number one most valuable thing that you can do. I mean, thought, raise your hand. All right, cool. So number two, right, when it comes to building rapport, Getting information that's going to be helpful for you down the road. So there's certain types of questions that I like to ask in the very beginning of the appointment that I ask every single customer. I want you to think about, when you think about like, what are the five things you want to know about every single customer? I want you to take a minute and just kind of write those things down. Anything. But when you think about the goal is to build a connection, the goal is to ultimately get them to what at the end of the appointment? Buy knives and what? Give you recommendations. Yes, exactly. So say louder. The goal at the end of every appointment, two goals that are your number one, number two priorities. Number one is get them to buy something, and number two is to get them to give you recommendations. Everybody say it with me now. Okay. Number one goal is to get them to buy. Number two goal is to get them to recommend friends. Right. Give you recommendations. I'm not going to move on from this until everybody says it. Number one goal, get them to buy. buy. Number two goal, get them to give you <laughs> exactly. So good job, guys. Give yourself a round of applause for that. There's, you all did it. You did it. So how do you do that, right? How do you do that? you got to ask questions that will help you down the road. So think about when it comes to getting people to buy stuff and when it comes to getting people to give you recommendations, what would be like five things that you would need to know about every single customer that you work with, no matter what? I want you to just write down some ideas really quick. Just write down some thoughts. What kind of knives are they using? When it comes to getting them to buy stuff, how do they like their knives? What kind of knives are they using? Right? Who does the cooking? Who makes the decisions? What are the things that you would want to know? I, mean, I just gave you four really awesome money ones. In case you didn't notice. You write those down, steal them, it's totally fine. Right? When it comes to getting recommendations, I want to know like, how long you live in the area. Do you do certain things for fun? Like go to church, or do your kids play sports, or there's just questions that I want to ask throughout the appointment while I'm building rapport to get to know that customer so that later on in the appointment, when it comes to asking for recommendations, I can bring those things up later on because I asked those questions earlier. Does that make sense? So what are questions that when you think about the customers that you want to work with, the places that you want to work in, the types of people that you want to do appointments for, What's a question that you could ask on every single appointment to ask?
So for example, I used to, when I first started, I didn't know anybody where I was going to school. I was in college, I had the $1,200 a month of bills that I had to pay, I didn't know anybody where I was selling. And so what I had to figure out was, you know, I was driving three hours home every weekend. Like I would get out of class on Thursday night, I'd go to the office, I'd phone jam for two and a half hours, set up all my appointments for the weekend, I'd leave, drive three and a half hours home, get in at like one o'clock in the morning, wake up the next day and go to my first appointment, do appointments every day for three days in a row, over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then do a couple appointments Monday, and then leave either Monday afternoon or evening, depending on how many appointments I had, and drive three and a half hours back. There were times where I actually only made it halfway back, because I had to be in class on Tuesday morning at like 8 a.m. I'd only make it halfway back Monday night, I'd stop, sleep in my car, get up, and drive, like get up with just enough time to drive to class. And this, by the way, just so you all know, this was before they had alarms on cell phones. It was before we had text messaging, before there was such a thing as smartphones. I was the first kid in my high school to have a cell phone, and I, you know, that back then it was like a dumb phone. I'm older than you think I am. This guy's like, how old are you, dude? Like, seriously, I'm older than you think I am. Okay. So, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> but the point of that is, right? The point of that is that I had to drive three and a half hours to do appointments. What do you think was a question I wanted to make sure I asked every single customer when it came to recommendations? Sure, you should say, yeah, I want to confirm with them, of course, stuff like that. More importantly, more. No. What do you think I wanted when it came to recommendations? Do you know any people closer? Exactly. Do you know any people closer to me, right? And so I made sure that that was one of my five questions I asked every single customer all the time. Who do you know that lives closer to Kalamazoo? Who do you know that lives between here and where I go to school? And what's funny is that I wouldn't get them on every single appointment, but you sure as heck better bet. in Grand Rapids. Oh, okay, cool. Later on, when I'm asking for recommendations, what do you think I always And soon I was doing appointments an hour away from school, and then people an hour away knew a lot more people around where I lived, and next thing you know, I was doing, you know, within in a few months, I was doing appointments right around school. I was not having to drive three and a half hours every weekend. I wasn't having to sacrifice every single weekend just to work. And I was still getting the same amount of work done. Right, so what are the questions that you need to know from every single customer? That's just one example, guys, of how it's helped me out. But thinking in this way, I want you to write down your paper right now. I need to know the 10 questions that I ask every customer no matter what. Make five of them questions that help you with sales, and five of them questions that help you with getting more referrals. Because A, questions are always helping you build more what? Rapport, exactly. And B, where like you walk in somebody's house, and maybe because you guys, how many of you guys are newer? Like you start. Not as many referrals yet, but eventually, here's what's going to happen. What I love about this job is that it's so easy to build a network. It's so easy to build a network. And what that means is that eventually, you're going to move away from your practice list. And you're going to have all these referrals because you're still going to get getting leads. And then you're going to start seeing people who may A lot of people are like, oh, I actually, I 
I wish I could go back and see all of my friends and family and stuff like that again. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to call my friends and family. I'm afraid of what they're going to think, what they're going to say. Well, a lot of that was me too. But here's what I learned very quickly: was that starting with my friends and family was the most valuable thing that I could have done. I wish actually that I could go back and see them again from the get go because I'd sell them so much more if I had, if I could. Right? If I could do it over again, knowing what I know now, oof, I'd sell them so much more. But that's not the point. Right? The point is, eventually you're going to get to a point where you're seeing people you don't. No, and it's not as comfortable as seeing people who you do know. I mean, you already had that awkward moment where, like, you don't really know what to talk about. Like, they're not really open yet. They're still kind of feeling you out. Like, who's this knife guy on the table? Anybody been called a knife guy or knife girl yet? Raise your hand. Look, Justin's in the back. Like, yeah, that's me. Right. So here's what happens. Right. Sometimes either you're not comfortable talking to people, or people aren't comfortable talking to you yet. And so I use what I call the four fallbacks. If I'm not sure what to talk about, if I'm not comfortable with them, or I can tell that we're just not jiving yet, they're not comfortable with me, I always go to one of the four callbacks. Why don't you write this down? P-I-B-B. P-I-B-B. -B. -B -B. And here's the secret. Right? Rapport is all about building connections. Questions all throughout the appointment. And making sure a number of those questions are helping you get information that's going to help you down the road. The third thing is if you don't know what questions interests that they have, their interests. Or, or we go to the counter or wherever we end up to do the, you know, the thing, is I always make sure I swing by the living room and I swing by the refrigerator. Because where do people put their pictures? In the living room or on the refrigerator, right? Or if I see a hallway with pictures, they're like, yeah, yeah, look over here. I'm like, I see a hallway with pictures. I'm like, oh, what's this? And they're just like, Oh, yeah, you know, and I'll flick on the light in the hallway, and I'll just look at all the pictures on the wall and be like, oh, who's this? Who's that? People love talking about their memories, and pictures are where they store them. Yes or yes? Yes. Yeah, and what pictures go on the wall? Their least favorite ones or their most favorite ones? The most favorite ones, right? So check this out, guys. I'm going to show you how this all ties together. I go to the kitchen, and I see a whole bunch. I see three wedding invitations on the refrigerator. I'm storing that information. And then they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, great. Have you guys gotten your gifts for those yet? No? Oh. What's your budget for each one? Oh. Okay, cool. Now what you've done is identified a need for them. You've asked questions, they've given you information, and now you can say, cool, can I show you some gift ideas that might fit in your budget? And you're about to solve a problem for them. And anytime that you can solve, fill a need or solve a problem for a customer, that's a win. They love you because they're probably not even thinking about it. They haven't looked at their refrigerator pictures in weeks. And they're like, you bring it up, they're like, oh crap, you're right. I do have three weddings coming up. Holy smokes, they are more important people. Oh my gosh, I don't have my gifts yet. Ah, oh, I am going to spend money on that. You have gifts? And they fit right in my budget? And there are things people will use every day and love for the rest of their lives? Sale or no sale? <laughs> sale, exactly, right? But it's all because you ask those questions. So you ask about people that you have in common, interests that they have, and then if they have interests that are the same as yours, like I grew up in Michigan, when people would say, oh, I love to ski, and I'd be like, oh, me too. We talk about that for a few minutes. Now you've got a connection, right? Pictures, get them talking about their memories, get them talking about their pictures, it helps you get to know them better. It also helps you uncover referrals and stuff like that. And then the fourth thing is their pets. Their pets. 
One of my best friends in the business, his name is Pat Osides. He's from Austin, and uh, this guy's crazy. Every time that I go and watch him work, here's what I see Pat do. Every time, it's like 100% closing on this, right? He, as soon as he walks in the door, if there's a dog, he is on the floor, on his back, rolling around, kissing the dog. And I'm like, dude, that is disgusting, right? But he loves it. He loves it. I'm not a dog person, really. I'm like, oh, hi, buddy. How you doing? What's your name? Let me see you later. <laughs> right? their name later because when they show back up later on when you're talking about money you're like oh hey Jojo what's up buddy yeah how's it going you're talking about money to them to the customer it's usually like this thing and then all of a sudden their pet shows up or anything like you you dial back and go back to the pictures that we talked about earlier or you go back to you know the interest that you have earlier you're like hey tell me more about this it, like calms things down right? it takes all the pressure off it suddenly becomes this personal thing I mean, follow. How many of you are like, oh, I can do this. I can ask questions. I can make sure there's a certain number of questions I ask in every single appointment, and I can talk about the four, the you know, the four fallbacks. I can talk about you know people we have in common, interests that we have in common, their pets and their pictures. How many of you are like, oh, I can do that. By the way, if you do these things, you will be able to build deeper connections with your customers, and you will sell more business. Because here's what they do. here's what's most important. Love to go by Zig Ziglar. People don't care how much you know until they how much you care. You should write that down. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the way that you show people you care is by keeping things personal throughout your appointment, not pitchy. And the way you keep things personal is by asking great questions all throughout, start to finish. Some of those questions are about them and getting to know them better. Some of those questions are about you and the information you need to help you do a better job at the end. Cool, now let's talk about leads. Right? When it comes to leads, here's how you do it. Leads are about three things. Number one, planting seeds. Number twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, hundred, five hundred, a thousand leads, ten thousand leads. I'll tell you the ten thousand leads story, right? Actually, I'll wait on. I'll wait and uh, let you know. Now. So here's what it is, right? So number one, planting seeds. Very early on in the appointment, there's one thing you always have to say if you're not saying it yet. You need to start saying it on your next one. So when I'm sharing, how many of you share your goals on your appointment? You're telling people, hey, I'm in this big contest. I want to win this big thing. Raise your hand if you are. Okay, all of you should be doing this. If you're afraid to show your goals, share your goals. Trust me when I say, it. people get. People want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Like they don't want to buy knives from you just because they need knives. They will buy more knives from you because they need knives, but also because they understand that it's helping, it's contributing to something bigger than just themselves. It's helping you hit a big goal. So when you're done sharing goals, here's what you say. Whether or not you buy anything today is totally up to you. So you share all your goals, you give them all the reasons they want to buy, and then I always say, whether you want to buy anything today is totally up to you. My goal is just that you like me enough that you'd be willing to introduce me to your friends and family. Because the only way that I work is by referral. I don't cold call. I don't show. I don't go door knocking. I only show Cutco to people I've been personally recommended to. I mean, you can do that on every single appointment. By the way, here's what happens, right? By doing that, what happens is, it's not a surprise at the end. The whole time they're thinking of people who would like it. Because you brought it up in the beginning, you played it and see in the beginning. And so when you get to the end, after you're done writing up the order, or they're like, oh, we're not going to buy anything, or whatever, because it's bad timing. You're like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, there's one more way that you can really help me out. And then they go, oh yeah, right, oh, it's a friend and family, right? And they've already got three or four people in mind, and then you go through your approach, plus quality tools to help you get 
more leads, and then boom, 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 you're all set. Make sense? Okay, cool. So start planting seeds on every point if you're not already. Number two, know your approach. Who can stand up and give me their leads approach right now, start to finish? Yo, bro. Come on up. Let's give this guy a round of applause for volunteering. Let's give him a big GCK round of applause for volunteering. Ready? All right, man. Really? All right, Here, wait, wait. You can use my microphone so everybody can hear you. Cool. Mr. Mueller, how's that my demo? It was awesome. Great. Well, go ahead and pull your cell phone because there's one more very important part. This is where you can really help me out. I have paid every time I show the cut code, but I can only show the people I've been personally recommended to. So I need you to do, while I'm cleaning up, the job down with like 200 to 300 names of people who you think might be nice enough to help me out. I'm just kidding. 20 to 30 would be fine. I'm not looking for people who you think would buy, just size people like you willing to take a look. Here's a pen and paper, jot down as many as you can. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Dude, how many of you are like, that guy's a rock star? How many of you are like, I would give him leads if he asked me? Raise your hand. Some of you guys are like, he's wearing a white Peter jersey? I don't know. I'm still not sure about this guy. That's why you gotta ask questions. They'll trust, they'll report throughout so that by the end they like you enough to what? Introduce you to their friends. That's exactly how you do it. Guys, my leads approach. I mean, it's that simple. What's your name, bud? Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, I only show that to people I've been personally recommended to. So what I need you to do is just jot down like 10 to 15,000 people that you know who you think would be nice enough to take a look at Cutco. Now here's the thing, they don't have to be interested in buying Cutco, they just have to be nice people. You know, any of your nice friends and family would be great. I'm, I'm going to work on cleaning up my knives while I do that. Here's my notebook, here's my pen. Just go ahead and jot down as many people as you think of. As you can think of. By the way, you know how I had you grab out your address book and your cell phone earlier? That would be cool. Go ahead and use those because that'll help you get started. So thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Boom. Leave them, start polishing knives. Right? Couple key things there. Confidence, eye contact, it's memorized. By the way, I don't say I can only show it to people because that insinuates someone else is telling, is making the rules, right? I want it to actually be my thing. I only show people I've been personally recommended to. That's my choice. Right? I always ask big. Ask big. Ask big. How do you guys think I got 10,000 leads from one lady? You asked for 10,000 leads. I asked for 10,000 leads, exactly. I said, now here's the thing, right? I say 10 to 15,000, straight face. Most people are like, and I get to the end, I'm like, ah, by the way, 10 to 15,000, I was just kidding. 10 to 15 would be great. And now all of a sudden, 10 to 15 is not this big, crazy thing. People will always write down a few less than you asked for. So if you start with 10 to 15,000, and then you go, by the way, 20 to 30 would be awesome. They're like, oh, I can do 20 to 30, because in their head, they're already thinking 10 to 15,000, I could never do that, right? But here's the, here's the crazy thing. One time, I had a lady, I said 10 to 15,000, straight face, no joke. She reaches under the table, grabs out her neighborhood directory, slaps it on the counter, and goes, there's about 10,500 people in there. Will that do? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she was like, cool, I used to be the president of the Neighborhood Association. So just tell them I told you to call. And I was like, woo, woo, yeah. How many of you would be like that? If you don't ask, you never what? You never get it, right? So. Know your approach. Plant seeds in the made book that's spiral bound with a clear plastic cover, a black plastic cover on the back, inside, or on the front, it says, you know, it says cut code, it says thanks for helping me hit my goals. Um, and then inside it's like name, phone number where they live, best time of day to call, what they do, are they married, yes or no, do they have kids, yes or no. And on every page there's 30 slots. Th 
and you say, let me go, here's my notebook. Uh, uh, let me find a page that's empty here. Hang on. Oh, there's one. And you page through a whole bunch of full pages. That's called social proof. Number one, you're using a professionally made tool. Number two, you're using social proof to benefit. Right? When they see 5, 10, 15, 20, They want to do what everybody else is doing. Exactly. You guys are awesome, by the way. Thank you. But that's what happens, right? You start paging through, and then boom, boom, boom. They're like, oh, okay, cool. I can do that. I had one lady, she filled up three pages because I told her, hey, by the way, every page you fill up, you get an extra chance to do a $1,000 drawing. And I just used the cover shopping suite for that. But she was like, oh, hang on a second. Went to the other room, sat down on her computer. She got done with the first page. She goes, hey, Josh, listen to this. You know what that is? And I was like, what? She goes, that's the sound of the page turning. I'm on page number three. And I was like, you're awesome. Keep going. I want to get your name in that drawing as many times as possible. She ended up giving me 55 quality referrals. Those 55 referrals led into over $50,000 in sales. So use quality tools to support you. You don't get my leads. Well, please help me with this book. And I was like, okay, great. And I, we just start now. We make them involved, and we just send it to you for one. We pay for them. same amount of money that you that would cost you to go make one, right? You can go order it right online. So here's you can plug your phone. And I want you to send an email to me directly. I'm going to give you my email so you can save it. And if you want more quality training or you have questions or anything, reach out to me anytime. It's what I'm here for. I'm a national trainer with Cupco. My goal is to help people. So just send me an email. CSP Josh. So your first and last name and your zip code. Name your zip code, subject line leads book. Just send that email off, and we will send. Well, I will email you a link. My team and I will email you a link where you can go right online. You can see the leads book. You can check it all out. If you want, we can buy them. I think they're like ten bucks. I don't. I don't know how much they cost anymore because my office is here. But cool. All right. Awesome. So I guarantee if you use it, you'll get tons more leads. This is how I average twenty leads per appointment. So guys. <laughs> Two things, right? If you want to have customers that love you forever, get awesome, become a master at building rapport, and then become a master at getting introduced to their friends and their family. Work through their network. There's nothing more fun than when you get to go to a customer's house for a barbecue because you get invited. You're like the knife guy that knows everybody in the neighborhood, or you're the knife girl that knows everyone in the family. And you show up, and you're the life of the party. And the reason you're the life of the party at your customer's barbecue, or your customer's pool party, or your customer's anniversary, or your product with amazing service that they use every day that they love for the rest of their lives. Seriously, this kind of stuff happens. So have confidence. Know your approach, use quality tools, plant seeds in the beginning so you can maximize the number of leads that you get, and then make sure you're asking questions that help you get information that will be helpful to you later when you're ready to ask for leads, you're ready to ask for the sale. And you will see that you'll connect with people at a higher level, and your customers will become raving. Fans. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Right. Round of applause. You guys get some good stuff? Yeah. Sweet. Awesome.
Well, next, uh, care. <laughs>